Well, we're having this very special interaction with uh, Sanjeev Gupta of the Liberty House Group all the way from UK. Mr. Gupta, thank you so much for chatting with us. Uh, uh, great to have you on the channel. Now, Liberty House is such a nicely diversified industrial house in commodities, uh, you know, capital goods, power, uh, automotive components spread across countries running into billions of dollars and pounds. How is it to be right mm. now facing this, uh, you know, epidemic led slowdown, one of its kind seen in over a century? Uh, how are you really dealing across your businesses with the slowdown which has gripped the world? No, no undoubtedly, this is a once in a lifetime challenge. None of us have ever experienced uh, anything like this before. So we are, we are reacting, you know, we have been, uh, we, we are basically known for our agility. So we've reacted very quickly, shifting uh, production patterns, you know, making a match to different markets, different requirements and so on, um, going on up efficiency drives and, and so on and so forth. But while these problems are all required to be tackled carefully and quickly, this also we believe is uh, an opportunity to accelerate changes which we already which were already in our motion so you would have seen or you would have heard about various uh, projects which have been accelerated our project in australia to go to green steel putting a new dri plant based on hydrogen and uh, and uh, natural gas our project in romania similarly putting a new dri plant based on uh, natural gas and hydrogen our investments in the uk our investments in the czech so all our uh, investment strategy basically has, is being excelled. We see that this uh, crisis will bring about a greater need for local investment and, uh, you know, regrowth of economies. So are you telling me that you have not really reworked your numbers, lower uh, your capex, which you have planned up in a new COVID-impacted uh, world? Uh, apart from, of course, uh, going through better efficiencies, aiming at cutting costs, which most of the business houses are doing, uh, have you also taken into trimming of expenses and, and many others? Which are the areas? What kind of savings are you doing uh, by those kind of activities? No, so we announced our global 30% efficiency drive. This 30% efficiency drive means different things for different plants and different countries and different locations. In some places, it does mean cutting costs. It does mean, uh, unfortunately, some headcount uh, rationalization as well. In other places, it's just changing our operations because since production is down everywhere, our production in general is down 20, 30% across the globe. So we have to readjust our operations, re look at our uh, shift patterns, how we operate, where we operate, what raw material mixes we use. So basically the idea is that we want within a short period to achieve a 30% efficiency improvement in every operations uh, across the globe. So that is definitely a uh, direct result of this uh, pandemic and we are you know, we're taking on that challenge head on. What I was saying was that while we take on those challenges and while we adjust to the market conditions, which will in our opinion last for another year to two years, at the same time, we are also accelerating our investment strategy towards our making our plants more efficient, more green, and uh, you know, driving towards our carbon neutral target of uh, 2030. Mm -hmm. I understand. You've been running these businesses through the cycles in various geographies. Uh, and of course, we are seeing that uh, various geographies and countries are gradually reopening their economies. Uh, uh, in the last couple of weeks. What are the early indications are you getting? What are you reading in terms of demand? Uh, how long do you think uh, or how deeply impacted would uh, various geographies you're operating in uh, would be impacted by slowdown? Some people are talking about a V-shaped recovery. Others are saying it could be much, much more prolonged. What are your thoughts uh, since you've got skin in the game in various geographies as well as uh, businesses? Yeah, so in a general point I'll make is we definitely are not subscribers to the V-shaped uh, recovery. This crisis will last longer than one any other crisis in history so far. Uh, but it does, it does depend on geographies. In some places, recovery will be faster. For example, in Australia, we expect a, a faster recovery. In Europe, we expect a much slower recovery. Sector-wise as well, we think construction will be less hit, but uh, automotive and consumer goods will be much worse hit. Anything which is related to consumer confidence uh, will take a, will take time. Will take, in our opinion, between a uh, year, year and a half, maybe up to two years for a full recovery. Right. Let's uh, shift your focus and uh, our viewers' focus to India, where you have been uh, uh, eyeing opportunities for over two years now, and you have, uh, you know, you're 
uh, you have actually circled upon assets and have even picked some from the stressed asset side. Now we are getting indications that uh, the group is keen on further opportunities and is looking at assets. Talk to us about your India strategy. What are your plans over here? And now with this slowdown, which has hit Indian economy as well, are you getting, are you seeing better valuations of the sectors and businesses you are interested in? Uh, what exactly do you have on your drawing board? So naturally, given our, uh, the Indian origins of the group, there has been a calling to make India a, a real center for our business for a long time. And we've been examining that for a very long time as well. We, we tried to come into India last year with uh, great ambition. Uh, some of those journeys were a bit more fraught than we had imagined. But we finally landed on one good asset, which we're now focused on uh, reopening and uh, developing and growing. And that will set the foundation, let's say. And we will definitely grow our business in India. We expect India to be amongst our major hubs, same as UK, Europe, US, and Australia. And uh, we will look at all opportunities in our sector. So our, our sectors basically are steel, aluminium, and uh, renewable energy. In all these three sectors, we will we'll look for opportunities and, and we'll look to make India a substantial part of our group. How is the environment looking right now to be uh, having sizable exposure in the commodities business, metals uh, particularly, even in the Indian context, given that the sheer demand so, for the yeah. commodity would be much lower next 14, 18 months. Uh, what is your own assessment of the cycle in the commodity space? So first of all, remember that steel is not used to having uh, ups and downs. Steel is a very cyclical business. So this is no, you know, in terms of us facing a downturn is not something which is uh, particularly special. It is, it is true that this down cycle is worse than it has been in previous cycles. But nonetheless, steel companies in general or industrial companies in general are well equipped to handle ups and downs uh, in cycles. But fundamentally, the demand for steel is growing. In the next 30 years, the demand for steel will double globally. Fundamentally, the demand for aluminum is growing. Fundamentally, the demand for energy is growing. So we are in sectors which are growth sectors overall. But we have to go through uh, short term ups and downs. The other point is our model is very much based on making sure that we A, utilize local resources and B, that we invest for the future. So we believe very strongly that the future of our industry is going towards green, steel and green aluminium. Hence, we have invested very heavily in uh, renewable energy. We are investing in converting all our uh, steel plants to, to green steel. Aluminium already are two smelters are basically the greenest in the world. So as long as we are progressively adopting new technology, new investments, and looking to the future and focusing on local resources and local markets, that business model will always be robust no matter what the economic conditions. And sometimes crises like these actually bring about the ability to accelerate some of our strategies and uh, growth. All governments globally are very keen now to see local investment, local supply chains. The frailty of the globalization model has been shown to everybody. Hence, there will be an accelerated or a enhanced focus on local industrial investment. You saw our, our announcements in uh, Romania, but together with the Romanian Prime Minister and all their ministers, we announced a very ambitious 4 million ton green steel plant. There was a partnership announced with the government, with Romgas, which is a national uh, gas company, with the Exim Bank of the country, with all the key stakeholders to accelerate this uh, change towards green steel, which Europe is leading, but other countries and other parts of the world are also following now. So we see an enhanced environment for, for investment and for accelerated growth towards uh, environmentally friendly uh, industries uh, across our different sectors. Very interesting, Mr. Gupta, you brought up that point. Uh, Deglobalization uh, clearly is gathering pace and uh, back home in India, our government and leadership have also announced Atma Nirbhar, Nirbhar uh, you know, ambitions of being self-sufficient or self-reliant in most areas of strategic importance. How are you analyzing the Atmanirbhar uh, in a, you know, uh, scheme or I would say uh, the process which the country has moved towards and how do you see large business houses setting up greenfield projects here uh, or you know, starting from the base or around that the way you are doing right now? What are your thoughts on Atmanirbhar uh, plans of our country? So I think in every country there is opportunities for us to basically reshore or bring bring uh, home industry which is uh, you know currently based on imports. UK is also a very good example. Half our steel which we consume in the UK is currently imported. So there is a clear opportunity. India also as it grows and it needs more and more resources like steel, like aluminium, like energy will need more and more production if it is not to 
start becoming dependent on imports. So all these countries, what we need to analyze is what is their local resource. In the UK, for example, we don't have any iron ore. We don't have any coal. We don't have any, we don't have gas. So we don't have the basic raw materials which you need to make steel. So industry, we would argue, why would it be able to prosper here when you have no raw materials? But what we have is a good market. We have a 12 million ton steel market. Over 7 million tons today is imported. And what we have is an abundance of availability of steel scrap. UK exports 7, 8 million tons of steel scrap. Availability of scrap in this country will double. It will go to over 15 million tons in the next 10 years and towards 20 million tons in the next 10, 15 years. So we should focus on that raw material rather than focusing on imported iron ore and coal, which uh, the country mainly does at the moment. So and if we apply ourselves to that methodology, if we basically focus on what is available locally in terms of natural resources and how do we adapt those natural resources to apply to industry, that is the most successful model and most sustainable model. So here in, in so in India also you have more uh, towards moving towards green steel, which is recycled steel, because as it is our country is uh, producing quite a lot and consuming quite a lot, so scrap steel will be volumes will be higher. Is that the plan? Can you share with us four five year roadmap now that you've taken over an asset? No, you see this green steel has two two uh, two ends to two bookends. Let's say one bookend is recycling scrap. And the other big bookend is producing new virgin steel, but using hydrogen rather than using coal. So, which is which is the two strategies which uh, GFG or Liberty has basically adopted. The recycling of scrap actually is more applicable in developed countries because there is accumulation of steel through the last history. So, in the UK, since uh, the Industrial Revolution, there has been an accumulation of steel in the economy. The UK economy has almost a billion tons of steel in its system, all of which has to be eventually recycled. So the availability of scrap is, is higher in countries which have developed earlier. Mm -hmm. So in India, the availability of scrap is limited. So the opportunities for recycling are there for sure. And we are basically already in Adunik, we will be recycling some uh, steel scrap, but the opportunities are limited. So India has to go towards hydrogen steel. And that comes from availability of cheap, natural, renewable energy. As long as the renewable energy prices keep coming down in India, which they are certainly already doing, the opportunity India will have is to develop hydrogen and hence to develop hydrogen steel. So we will definitely uh, go on this journey in India as well. We are already on this journey in other countries like in Australia, like in Romania, where there is availability of uh, iron ore and also availability of natural gas and eventually availability of hydrogen as renewable energy becomes cheaper and cheaper. So that's the green steel journey which Liberty is on. On the one side, it's recycling in countries like the UK, where there is an abundance of scrap. And the other side, it's making hydrogen steel in countries like uh, Australia and Romania, and hopefully eventually in India. So next four or five years, do you see the group having its presence in uh, steel alone? Or do you think auto components would also be following energy uh, or power generation would also follow? Where do you see the footprint for five years far out here in India for you? So the three main industrial verticals for, for GFG are Liberty, Alvance and Cymec. So Liberty focuses on steel, but also on its downstream applications, including uh, auto. Similarly, Alvance focuses on aluminum, but also on downstream components, including in the automobile uh, sector. And of course, renewable energy feeds uh, both the steel and the aluminum business. So these are the three industrial verticals. We will pursue growth in all of these three, which will also include some downstream businesses for those businesses. Right. Uh, talk to us about your, your operating in such large uh, format in terms of countries, uh, of scale of operations, etc. There is this wave of geopolitical nervousness which is sweeping the world right now. And China is in the center of it, where you do a huge amount of sourcing for your various businesses as well for commodities, be it US-China or, or recently even Indo-China. Uh, you know, for a group which operates at that, that scale, uh, how is geopolitical uh, you know, issues as a risk? Do you see that? And from the capitalist point of view, does it to a certain extent also uh, you know, put a roadblock in free flow of capital across the world. What are your thoughts on this issue? So this, you know, this swings around of us. There is definitely having geopolitical tensions is not good for uh, global growth and it is an impediment. It is, it is unfortunate. And one would wish that there was uh, more harmony across uh, different, di different power groups in the world. But it also brings a clear opportunity. GFG has always been about localization, about local economies, not globalization. 
We have always advocated that the era of globalization is over and we need, all need to focus, all countries need to focus on their domestic economies, on their domestic manufacturing. Again, I was, as we talk about uh, the UK, for example, the domestic uh, share of industry in the UK has dropped from 30% of GDP to under 10% of GDP. This is clearly unsustainable because it causes lots of unemployment or let's say imbalances in employment uh, within, between cities and industrial areas, and which is what led to Brexit and other issues. And similar issues have happened in many other countries as well. So the reindustrialization of certain countries is very important. And we have always been an advocate, advocate and a player in that field. Which, which will now get accelerated or heightened by this current crisis. Both the, uh, the COVID crisis showed that local supply chains are very important, and also the geopolitical tensions which have been heightened by this will also again make people focus on their own industries rather than looking at globalization and having global supply chains. Supply chains will definitely become more local, which clearly presents an opportunity for industry to invest and to basically take, uh, to build ecosystems within their own domestic economies. Right. Mr. Gupta, leave us with your thoughts and plans and strategy of the group in other geographies, Australia. You're looking at several uh, assets in advanced stages and, you know, in, in order to grow them, progressing on them. Tell us uh, the way forward for the group in other geographies, key geographies, and what are the plans there? So, again, as I was saying earlier, our focus in every geography is based on local resources and the local market. In the UK, we are not focused on import and producing steel because this is not viable, which is why our peers in the, you know, whether you look at the steel industry in the UK, it's been suffering for a very, very long time because of that. On the contrary, if you look at our furnaces in uh, Rotherham, which we bought from Tata, we've doubled production already and we will double production yet again. How and why? Because we have local availability of scrap. And the only missing ingredient is, uh, is, is energy. Energy is expensive in the UK, and we're trying to solve that ourselves by investing in our own energy plants. We are doing the world's first conversion, or conversion of a coal plant to use end-of-life waste, which will give us a real competitive advantage and will really support our new project in Newport, where we're going to build a 2 million ton uh, electric offer and a scrap-based steel plant, which will be powered by our, our own energy. So the ingredients are there. We just have to work on them. The market is there. UK imports more than half the steel it consumes. We have availability of raw material and steel scrap. Energy is a missing ingredient because it's too expensive, but we're investing in energy ourselves, which gives us a unique uh, competitive advantage against our competitors. Similarly, now, if you go to other countries, if you go to Australia, for example, Australia has some of the best renewable energy. We have our own project in Australia. Again, uh, the Australia's largest solar farm, which has been built. With the reduction and lowering of renewable energy prices, the viability of aluminium will increase, and uh, sorry, viability of hydrogen will increase. And as hydrogen becomes cheaper and cheaper, we'll be able to use hydrogen as a substitute uh, for carbon in making steel. Hence, we have launched our, our DRI plant-based project there, which will basically substitute our uh, blast furnace, which will initially be based on natural gas, but eventually will replace hydrogen as its feed. A similar project was launched in Romania, as I was mentioning earlier. And again, other countries such as if you talk about the US or Czech, where there is availability of scrap, we'll be focusing on that. So we're focusing in the steel sector at least either on scrap or on hydrogen steel. In aluminum, we're focusing on green energy again, powering aluminum. And our renewable energy business will, will feed all these businesses. So in every geography, our strategy is more or less the same. It depends on what local resources are available and how you can best deploy them and what is the local demand and what is the gap in the market, what imports are basically coming, currently coming in and what can we do to substitute those imports with local production on a more competitive and a more sustainable basis. All right, uh, Mr. Gupta, I'll let you go on that one. Thanks so much for chatting with us today about your businesses, about your India plan and overall uh, your view on the way global businesses are coping with the slowdown and with the recovery which lies ahead. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you.